The guys you work with, you actually with them more than you are your own family. We know each other's wives. You know, many times we go out, we eat together, uh, go out on the weekends, we spend time together, we hunt together, fish together. You think like they think, you work like they work. If I had to put it against anything else, I'd put it like going to war. The guy beside you, you're depending on him. You're depending on him to get you home every day. But then again, when something tragic does happen, you know, it's, it's something you never overcome. It's like losing a member of your family. Jeremy, uh, he was a jokester. He, he played quite a bit. <laughs> but he was a hard worker. Now, that is something that I will say. And he would go that extra mile to help someone. If something needed to be done, he was usually the first one up. He'd either show you how it's done or figure it out and act like he knew how it was <laughs> done. He was a hard worker. He worked, you know, he, he, was, he was a good hand. As a crew leader, He's the type of guy I would have loved to have on my crew. It's like a pack of beagle hounds. Open the gate, turn them loose. Turn them loose, let him go. That day on my lunch break, it was actually the day of the night of the Christmas play. I was here at school getting, you know, Christmas play um, costumes ready. And I'd went to town real quick to get something. And I got a phone call from my friend, Miss Frankie. She's an assistant in the other learning center. And she said, Liz, um, we need you to come back to the school. And when I opened the office door, I saw two representatives uh, from Southern Pine, and then I knew something had happened. It's 10.43 in the morning, December the 12th. Ty told me, he said, Chad, hurry up. Jeremy's been hit. Loggers had cut a tree that got away from them and tore the line down. The line broke in the clear. And Jeremy and Moses Moore had arrived on the scene, walked in there, found where the line was down at, assumed the line was, was dead. It wasn't. And Jeremy went by himself and picked the wire up off the ground, hooked it on his belt, climbed up the pole just to sleeve the wire together. And when he reached and grabbed the phase and made contact, that's, that's when the accident occurred. This line was still hot. Man, when I drove up, got out of my truck, I throwed all the stuff out of my truck. The first thing I seen was Jeremy White's hand laying on the ground. Jeremy was up the pole and he was actually hollering and moaning and, you know, just in pain. I mean, it, and uh, Moses finally gets him, gets him to the ground. There's two things I want. One is a lot of stuff I won't never forget. One of them was the smell of what it was, of the, his flesh burning. And the other one, Jeremy White, was so hot. Man, it was like picking up something off of the stove it was just, I just couldn't believe how hot he was. When I went into the hallway, the doctor uh, was talking about uh, his legs, the extent of the injuries that had happened, and that they were gonna have to make the decision uh, to remove uh, both legs below the knee. And of course you could see uh, to the bone uh, on both where the hooks had been, and it made contact, but of course gone out his feet. And we knew he was going to lose some limbs, but never thought it was going to cost him his life. The number one row when you go to pick a line up, you find out which way the line's feeding from the source side. Then you find out what type of device it's feeding from. 
whether it's just a hotline clamp, a fuse cut out, or a breaker. You clear that device and we ground. Ground save lives. Simple as that. Within our uh, organization, you know, within the Lyman uh, Brotherhood, you'll come to understand that if you're productive, sometimes that we, you know, they may overlook things, which is not the way you want it to be, uh, but sometimes that happen and maybe some things went overlooked with Jeremy and his situation because he was such a knowledgeable person. Jeremy was a productive employee. It, it's easy to overlook things. It's easy to begin taking shortcuts. And shortcuts breed shortcuts. You get away with it this time, it's so much easier to do the next. The more you overlook, the easier it becomes. That's the thing that's the hardest for me, is I know that. You know, that he, he made those choices. You know, sometimes I want to be angry at him because of that, because he was very smart. But you know, sometimes we get prideful and we try to handle things ourselves, and that happens. A lot of people who don't work with electricity every single day will look at it and they, all they know is it's dangerous. All they know is what's in their house and what it'll do to them. But you take these guys that do it every single day and, and they really don't think about it. And it's as simple as taking the analogy of, of driving a vehicle. You get in your vehicle every single day, you drive to work, you drive to school, you drive to church, whatever the case may be, but you don't really think about it. You just do it. And, and that's what happens to these guys. They get so complacent in doing the same job over and over again to the way they don't think about it. They don't think, what are the dangers here? Or have I taken every step I can to make sure I'm, I'm keeping myself as safe as I can. And, and that's really what happens to them. We have probably made more changes in the last three years than I've ever seen in the previous 25, 27 years. Something we've went to now is every job, every day, every trouble job. We fill out a job briefing form hazards associated with this particular job, what may or may not happen, what the job is, and solicit input from each person on the crew. We have a, a safety committee that now meets once a month to talk about things that's going on at different uh, headquarters. Uh, you know, are there things that we need to change, something that's working here in safety that works for, you know, that will work everywhere. We do field observations now, and that's going out to the job site, watching them, seeing if they've got their cone, signs, safety vests, proper clothing. You know, it's not to be hard, it's to save lives. And this is all a direct result of this accident. At the end of the day, when you look back, why did it take losing a life, a loss of life, a major accident? But then you look at any industry, and that's, that's what it takes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure everyone has heard it said, every safety rule is written in blood. It's changed a lot of our lives. It's changed in a way that every day I come to work, I have to realize that there is a reality that someone can be hurt or possibly killed. We at Southern Pine have always been a close family. And it was like when you know, we lost Jeremy, we lost a part of our family. If he was here today, he would say, ultimately when it boils down to it, is personal accountability. He chose not to use some things you know, that would have probably helped or prevented the accident from occurring. And he would say that. He wouldn't point his finger at anybody. Jeremy White will live in my memory till the day I die because he was family. That's what we are. It's not a day for three years I hadn't thought about what if we could have done something different. 